You know, though, we don't race go-karts in NASCAR. But we felt unanimously that you deserve to move forward. Have a seat. You made it to the finals. Congratulations. There's two of you and only one seat. Someone has to be eliminated. We have decided that the final seat goes to Like sweat and bullets and whatnot. It must have only been five minutes, but it felt like we were up there for about, you know, 30. <laughs> Patrick Staropoli. Congratulations, Patrick. Yes, thank you, guys. Amber, you keep your eyes on the target, focused on your dream. I think you've got what it takes as well. Thank you for participating. Thank you, guys. I thought for sure I was in the top three. I mean, it's kind of shocking to be fourth and to miss that final spot by just so little. I came into this doing my best. Now Michael Waltrip knows who I am, so it is what it is, and we move on to the next thing, I guess was so close between Patrick Staropoli and um, Amber. We had to make a decision, and um, our decision was that, um, that Patrick had outperformed her on the track, and that's why we went with him. Well, welcome to the finals. Looking forward to the remaining competitions. To me, it's all about who's the fastest. Being fast is definitely important, but there's a lot more to it, isn't there, Brian? Nope, you got that right. I am looking for a fast driver and someone that could represent my peak brand. There's more competition. Let's go get to it. Nice. All right. Obviously, on track is the most important to me. I want to have someone that can go fast. There's another aspect to being a, a championship race car driver, and that was how they could do in front of the camera. They've got to be good at that. It, it's just part of the business. Guys, congratulations on making the top three. I'm very excited to have you here with me. We've said from day one, being fast on the track is important, but also important to me is making sure that I have a strong brand ambassador for the Peak brand. So today, I've invited Danica Patrick, who is probably one of the best brand ambassadors in the sport of NASCAR. So guys, today for this challenge, you're gonna be reading teleprompter, as if you're doing a Peak commercial. So this gives you an opportunity to show a little bit of personality and purely just how you present yourself in front of a camera, how relaxed you are. And um, I wish you all luck. Chase, we're gonna start with you. I can't imagine the pressure they were under with Danica Patrick over on one side, coaching them and watching them, reading a teleprompter for the first time, and then having Michael Waltrip sitting in the stands, knowing you're being evaluated on everything that you've done. At peak, we're the independent guys, running a family-owned business, like nothing, like big oil. Where American-made quality go into good, honest oil. With everything your engine needs for the right run in the long haul. And what gets our motor going is using 65 years of experience in hot and cold protection to give you I thought I right spoke there. clearly and read through my lines well and, and tried my best to, to, to bring my personality out and really showcase Peak the best way that I could. Because we're car guys like you. Peak, run true. Did a nice job. Representing Peak, you know, as in a mock commercial, it was really cool to do, you know, being like on a TV set, per se, and just, you know, trying to show your personality in a commercial. It's really hard, but at the same time, it's really fun. I could see you, like, wanted to use your hands, yeah, I talked but you just, that's good. Use them. That's, that's what they want to see it. You did a really great job of using your hands at first. Yeah, then, and then you put them right back I here. I thought about it. I was like, no, that's like okay. <laughs> You've got the right idea. Yeah. I, was, I was really, I mean, I know she's great with marketing, commercials, everything like that, but I was really surprised at how specific her feedback was and how much she knew about, like, what goes into the produ production of a commercial. One other thing to keep in mind yeah. is, you know, when you get to that final line, like, mm -hmm. that's the delivery line. Sell it. Peak. Mm -hmm. Run true. Deliver it. Make people believe it. Just when they thought they had it figured out and they were comfortable, they're getting ready to go read their line. She says, hold on a second. Grab the bottle of Peak Motor Oil. 
At peak, we're the independent guys, running a family-owned business, nothing like big oil. Where American-made quality and value go into good, honest oil. At peak, we're the independent guys, running a family-owned business, nothing like big oil. Patrick outshined the rest. He just seemed to be more comfortable and natural. His voice inflection, the way he was comfortably holding the bottle of peak motor oil, um, he, he passed that test for sure. He's using 65 years of experience in hot and cold protection. To give you what's right for your engine and your wallet. Because we're car guys like you. Because we're car guys like you. Because we're car guys just like you. Peak, run true. Awesome, that was good. You used your hands. No, you got through it all. Yeah. You used your hands well. This helped. <laughs> you did, no, it yeah. does help, and that's good. That, that helps keep things moving and loose. I thought you did a really nice job. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Good job. Just impressed how they listen to Danica. Right. You know, she gives a lot of great direction to be able to set in this environment, take it in, and then right. that quickly spit it right back out. I love that. All right, guys, we've seen you on the track. You've been amazing in making lap times, but to make lap times, you gotta have some tires, you gotta have some gas, and that requires a pit stop. This is meticulous stuff, and to explain to you what all you gotta do in order to make a NASCAR pit stop, here's Mark Martin. All right, guys, when you get in your stall, you gotta stop on your marks. You gotta make sure the wheel is straight. When they drop the jack, that's when you go. We're racing from cone to cone, Pit road speed is 40 miles an hour in second gear. Are you ready for this final challenge? Yes, yeah, sir. let's do it. Yeah. Going out to the pit stop contest, I was freaking out. I never made a pit stop before in my entire life. I wanted to make sure I didn't stall it. I wanted to make sure I didn't hit anybody. Well, you don't want to go to first. The right. challenge shift going in, all right? They okay. know that it's a neck and neck battle. Any one of them can win the competition. Here we go, guys. Uh -oh. Forty miles an hour on pit road looks slow, but 40 miles an hour is still pretty fast when you're trying to get into a pit stall that's probably 30 or 40 feet. That, that was good. Nice job. Nice job. That was solid. That was a freaking blast, man. And I didn't run nobody over. <laughs> Man, I bet it feels good to be Patrick right now. Yeah. Got that behind him? Yeah, it didn't screw it up. All right, Logan. We're ready when you are, bud. Your overshot. Back him up, back him up, back him up, back him up. There, right there. I overshot my box a little bit. They're on my stop and definitely knew that I, I had messed up. That's a shame Logan overshot the pit. Yeah, you don't realize how fast 40 miles an hour is until you have to turn in here. It's a lot to learn in a short period of time. All right, Chase, we're ready when you are, bud. The pit stop was really challenging for me. You're trying to make up so much time getting into pits all that. I ended up overshooting it because I was... Back him up, back him up, back him up. Back him up. We had two of them slide through the pit stall. Probably would have been, you know, to their advantage to try the brakes a little bit earlier. Forty-six, twenty-two. That has got to be tough. Yeah. They knew this was a chance to impress the judges. And what do you usually do when you want to impress someone? Sometimes you overdo it. And that's what happened. And guys, we've collected all kinds of data from every challenge, and we've got to sort through it. My mind was tied on who was winning coming into this competition. I don't know how y'all felt, but we better huddle up. First three or four competitions, two rows to the top. Logan, very first event, he grabbed our attention right out of the box. I saw so much speed out of Chase Briscoe um, throughout every single competition. Patrick Starpoli came from nowhere. And uh, he grabbed our attention, we started paying more attention to him. And the more we did, the more we liked. Well, you guys have been through multiple challenges, and I want you to know, I would be very proud to call any one of you 
the next Michael Waltrip Racing Peak Stock Car Dream Challenge development driver. What a job. Logan, you caught our attention very early and kept it this entire competition. And Chase, the way you raced that go-kart and took the win on the last lap, that's forever a part of me. Patrick, you were solid throughout the whole competition. What you did on the road course and in the marketing really impressed me. Each one of those three deserve the chance to race for Michael Waltrip Racing and Peak Motor Oil. They just deserved it. They earned it. But, you know, there could only be one winner. Ty, let's reveal this baby. Let's do it. I know you guys have been waiting a long time for this moment and a lot of sweat and effort, and you're worried a lot to see who it's going to be. Reveal it, guys. Patrick Staropoli! <laughs> looking for the full package I'm happy that Patrick was chosen because he crushed it in the media side he did an amazing job in front of the camera working with Danica when you couple that with how well he did at the short track how great he did at the uh, at the road course event he, he, he became the winner you know ultimately what it was about Patrick raw he was a raw racer with a great attitude and a steady progression. That's what won me over. What? Oh, that's not. not this time. I love you. I'm so proud of you. It's a competition. It was hard. There was a lot of good drivers, a lot of different things that, you know, may have swayed their opinions here or there. And I don't think it came down to just, just one thing. It was a cumulative deal. We got you back. I still want to race. It's what I want to do. It's my dream. So, hopefully, it'll work out. We're gonna run the smack down. <laughs> you gonna make it? Nah. All right. You did your best. Just for them to say that, you know, I made the top three out of over 700 entries was definitely just a big deal for my confidence and my career. You just have to try to make it another way. Yep. I was the last one to get picked to go into the three and just barely made it into that. And we came out on top, man. I, just, I can't even believe this is happening. I know that right now what we have is, is a one race deal coming up. The race is in Washington in, in a few months and they want to test and prepare for it. And, you know, I'm ready to do whatever it takes to, to make that successful and see if we can get the momentum rolling from that and see what we can do from there. My name is Patrick Staropoli, and I am the winner of the Peak Stock Car Dream Challenge. Is this real? Is this happening?